Hello, hello, hello. Good night, good night. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Today we are going to be taking a quick look at another of the Max MSP basics as I see it. And this is our selected colour tracker or a coloured object tracker. It's very similar to one of the more advanced stuff we've done, but this is the simplest, plainest way of doing it. And what it does is we present an object, pick its colour, and then it will give us coordinates for it. Now, it doesn't do anything like uh, draw anything. All it does is it looks for the colour, and when it sees it, it draws this rectangle around it. How do we do it? Well, it's made up of one patch like this that opens and reads the camera and controls our two matrices. And then we've got a second, which is doing some maths and using the jit.finds object to draw around the rectangle based on the input we send it. That input being our two color or our color with some plus and minus to it so that it draws either side and not just dead in the center. So let's get that out of the way. Take a look at how we do it. So we'll start a new max object, a uh, new max window. And because we're going to be using frame-based objects, we need to bring in a metro. So we're going to have jet.metro. And then you can have whatever refresh rate you want as long as it's sort of sub 100. I'm going to go for a 20 here. And what this is going to do is going to send out a bang every 20 milliseconds. And we can pass that into a jet.qt grab. I'm going to type 320 by 240 to set up a resolution lower than the native. So now what's happening is jet.qt.grab, which is the webcam controller in Max, is receiving a bang to refresh its rate. But I haven't told it open yet. And open is a message that you pass a webcam or a grab object to open it up. So now, if I was to put it into the jet.p window, uh, I'm going to give it the same size as the resolution I'm bringing in. So now if I connect that, you'll see that we go real time. And I'm here, there's no lag at all, and that's because I've got this 20 second refresh rate. If we were to slow that way down, let's say half a second, you'll see that it's jittery because it's only every half second that it's generating a new frame for us. So back to the smooth way. We have our webcam and it's playing an image. Funnily enough, if you don't want to look at yourself, close is the opposite of open. And what that does is that shuts off the webcam port. For now, I'm going to leave it open and we're going to look at a way to always generate webcams uh, I only have one plugged in, which is the one built onto my laptop. So by default, it'll pick that. But say you're using a USB cam instead of your laptop's one like I am. We're going to do something called routing our VDEV list, which is video device list. And that's generated by the output or the second, uh, the dump out on our grab. Every time it receives a bang, we can get this information. We're going to add something called an iter, which breaks all of this dump out into an individual list. And then we're going to do prepend append. So we're going to tell, it's going to root our video device list. It's going to break that video device list into uh, a big chunk because what you'll see, it's probably not going to show us much because I only have one. We pass jet.grab the message get vdiv list. Yeah, and you can see here, because I've only got one plugged in, it only generates outputs one. But if I had more than one, it would be like FaceTime HD camera, comma, webcam two, comma, webcam three. And then when we iterate that, we break that down into a list. And we're doing prepend, append, we're going to add a message to the start of each of those elements to append, which means add it to the end. And that's important because they're going to go into a U menu. And so they generate properly and list properly. We need to have the app end. And from there, we've got a U menu that we can pick our cameras from. 
and then all we need to do is a message that's v dev list oh v device excuse me dollar one so whatever we pick from our u menu we want to take over as our dominant video device and all we do is we send that straight back into our grab so that's just a nice little thing to remember if you have more than one webcam you want to pick from. I'm just going to root that out of the way. So now we have our webcam, we've got our jitter uh, matrix, which is our, our live footage. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to plug in something called a sucker. And this is a beautiful way of getting pixel information from on top of a video. So we just drag it and drop it so it's the exact same size. We're going to attach something called a swatch, which is a nice color palette. And now when we go into using mode and pick something, it's going to change that color. So now I can get the nice blue off my phone case, the nice strange pink gray off my face, and my brownish door and my orangey walls. Mm. So that's what Sucker does. And we're going to use this information to pick the color that we want to track. So when we press something in here, we're going to get it to draw in the adjacent screen what we're tracking. And to do that, we're going to need to duplicate our window. So I'm just going to hold Alt and drag over into that window. We're going to use something called JIT.LCD. Uh, and I'm quickly going to, just going to add a 4 and a CHR at the end here just to make sure that it's able to handle our drawing properly. Now, eventually to draw our object, we're going to use the frame rec. So all we're going to do is every single time that uh, it identifies our object, it's going to draw a rectangle around it, and then we're going to get it to move around for us. You'll see here that it also requires a metro bang, much the same way as our jit.qt.grab does, because it needs to update its frame every single time. So we pass in our bang as well, and we're going to pass that into our jit.p uh, window. But nothing's going to happen yet because it's not getting any information. And that's what we're going to use down here to do. We're going to create a second patcher. So I'm going to do p, creates a sub patch, color. And what will happen is when you push enter is you'll open a second window. And that second window will look exactly the same as a normal max patch, but this time it's going to be internal so it only exists inside this one. I'm going to add an inlet and I'm going to duplicate that twice. And inlets operate that the furthest left to right is, is the numerical value. So you can see switching these around, they change between two and three depending on location. So they always go highest to lowest, eh, lowest to highest, I should say. The opposite of an inlet is naturally an outlet. Again, that operate on the left to right motion. What are the three objects I need to bring in here? Because I've got three inlets. First thing I'm going to need to do is bring in my uh, color data. And we're going to do that twice, once we get a high and once we get a low value. And then for LCD to work, it needs to receive the original matrix. And when I say original matrix, that just means our webcam footage. I'm going to put the output from Rasaka twice into P color, and I'm going to put jit.qt.grab into this third one. And now back inside, we're receiving our matrix, and depend which color we pick. Let me just make this a bit smaller you'll see that we're getting color information based in float. So what do I want to do with the information when it comes in? When we receive the color information, we'll just receive exactly where the center point of the largest clump is. So if we want to draw a rectangle, we need to scale it down a bit and up a bit. So we have a point before and a point after. So we turn Color values into a uh, from center floating point 
minus 1 and plus 1 to give us coordinates. So to do that, we're going to use the EXPR, Evaluate a Mathematical Expression. And all this is, is it's a way of writing maths inside Max. I'm going to take my first value, which is going to be a floating number. And then I'm going to take 0 0.1 away from it. And I'm going to duplicate that. But this time I'm going to add. So now we have a range of numbers. Now it's important that our values don't exceed or go below 1 and 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a prepend min 0 and duplicate it. And we're going to do a prepend max 1. And this is important because the object we're going to use, jet.findBounds, locates dimensions for a range of values. We've set our range of values. We need to make sure that it doesn't go either side of them, otherwise the track would go be completely off. So we input our minimum, our maximum, our expression value, and then we also include our original matrix. Jet.find bounds will output a minimum bound, a maximum bound, and then you can dump out all the information. So if we unpack the minimum and the maximum, we'll be able to get a set of two coordinates. And those two coordinates will relate to the maximum and the minimum bound of the rectangle we want to draw. Let me just scrunch this up a bit. And what did we do here? We uh, bound the upper and lower reaches to set to between 0 and 1. Find bounds generates the rectangle data from our input variables, e.g. wraps our colored pixels in a rectangle, a rectangle. It's not even, it's a, a rex toggle. So if we pack them back together, we now have four numbers that relate to the maximum or the minimum, then the maximum points on our rectangle. And lucky for us, the LCD generates frame rectangles using those exact variables so we have our minimum points and our maximum points so if we do frame rec dollar one dollar two dollar three dollar four and it will accept them in the order the pack gives them and we then output that to our output and put that output into our LCD We should see that our rectangle starts drawing stuff, but it's a bit muddy. There's too much going on. So we can use the power of messages to not only send the rectangle information, but the clear message as well. So it clears the LCD, then it draws its rectangle, then it clears the LCD, then it draws the next rectangle. To do that, we just do clear, comma, space. So now, if I hold this up, It's not just an expression we want to use, we want to use a V expression. 
because we're passing in a list, not just a single value. We're passing in three variables, RG, or four, R, G, B, and A. And I've only been calculating the red at the moment. So and hopefully now, if I show it this, select it, there we go. So it's just the light in here is a bit of an issue. But V expression, not just an expression, because we need a vector, which stands for a list of pixels, but that's up here, we're still down here. Hey. So there we go. Now, uh, let me see if I can get something that's nice and colorful for us. So here's the end of my light up USB. If I select that, this will give us quite a nice track because of the contrast over everything else in the scene. And you can even see when it goes behind the phone, it stops tracking it, bring it back, it automatically picks it up. And there we go. That was number three of Max Basics on how to color track a simple object and then draw its location.